Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. You would recall that uh, until the previous class we had looked at the discrete time setup and for that purpose we looked at a model wherein we had a investment in a bond uh, as well as a stock with the stock price process being modeled by the binomial model. And then what we did is that we looked at a single period portfolio optimization and then recognizing that the adaptation of the single period portfolio optimization to the multi period setup is not uh, straightforward and for which the dynamic programming principle was proposed and uh, the dynamic programming principle enabled the multi period optimization problem being divided into optimization problem over each of the individual single periods uh, that are that constitute this multi period setup. And then uh, we looked at a couple of applications of uh, the, the dynamic programming principle with specific utility functions. So, accordingly in today's class we are going to now move on from discrete time setup in terms of portfolio optimization to the continuous time setup with an emphasis on Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation. So, accordingly we begin today's lecture. on uh, optimal portfolios in the continuous time framework so uh, we begin by saying that uh, we consider what is known as the black Scholes Martin framework wherein there is a risk free asset or bond B whose value at time t is given by and we assume that the initial investment on the bond is 1. So, its value at time t is given by B t is equal to e raised to R t with R greater than 0 being the continuously compounded interest rate and there is a risky asset or stock S whose value at time t is given by the geometric Brownian motion or GBM model. S t is equal to S naught into E raised to mu minus half sigma square d t plus sigma square root of t little z of t with mu sigma being greater than 0 mu being the drift and sigma being the volatility and z of t being the standard normal random variate and 0, 1. 
So let me elaborate a little more on this. So if I the bond price at time t, this is on the assumption that you start off with an initial amount of 1 and end up with 1 into e raised to rt at time t. Now as for the geometric Brownian motion, you would recall that uh, this was given by dst is equal to mu s dt plus sigma s dw of t where your w was the winner process which follows n 0 t distribution that means a standard a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance t. So, the solution for this is s of t is equal to s 0 into mu minus half sigma square t plus so this actually should be uh, mu minus half sigma square t plus a sigma of w t. Now, we can replace w t by square root of t. So, just a correction square root of t into z of t. So, if z of t follows n 0 1 distribution, so it automatically follows that uh, w follows n 0 t distribution. So, that is how we get this uh, relation. So, that is this is equal to s 0 into e raised to mu minus half sigma square t plus sigma square root of t into z of t. Uh, so, further uh, we can show that the expected value of s of t is going to be s 0 into e raised to mu t which is why mu is referred to as the expected rate of return or drift. So, therefore, we have mu is equal to. So, if you look at this relation here, you can show that mu is going to be nothing but 1 over t into log of expected value of s t over s 0. So, from this relation you can obtain this relation and by taking log on both sides uh, by we can obtain that mu is equal to 1 over t into log of the expected value of s t over s 0. And likewise uh, you can also obtain that sigma square is equal to variance of log of s t minus log of s 0 over t. We now move on to the main problem in hand that is the utility maximization in continuous time. Uh, so, we begin with the motivation by pointing out that the dynamic programming principle described in the previous lecture can now be extended in case of continuous time models with the continuous counterpart of the optimality condition being called the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman abbreviated as HJB partial differential equation PDE.
So, we now consider again the problem of optimal allocation of wealth with the goal of maximization of the expected utility of the terminal wealth as was the case for the discrete model we consider for the continuous case the black scholes bsm will be the uh, abbreviation for black scholes martin model with a portfolio of one stock and one bond so that means your portfolio will have one stock and one bond. So, let us state the problem in more precise mathematical terms and the problem is find the value function V which satisfies v of t x remember that we had talked about the value function in the discrete case and this is going to be the supremum of the utility of the final wealth. So, final wealth is x of t and this utility is u of x of t and this is a random variable. So, I need to consider its expectation condition that at time t the wealth level available is x and this has to be run over the, all the possible portfolios pi that can be held. So, this is so in summary this means that we need to find the supremum of this quantity and the conditional expectation indicates that this is conditioned on the initial condition of x of t is equal to x and here pi is basically all possible portfolios. Now, here note that the supremum is over all admissible portfolios. Okay, so, now let us move on to the wealth equation just like we had done in the discrete case. So, this will give us a more precise structure of the portfolio. So, accordingly we start with pi as a portfolio process. Further, the notation and you will introduce the notation of pi as being dependent on time t. This notation is dependent on the information available up to time little t that is pi is an adapted process which is driven by what happens over time. Further, we let 
x which is the wealth variable be denoted by x raised to superscript little x and pi and this notation denotes the wealth process with specified x and pi for the initial investment of x being greater than 0 and portfolio strategy pi. So, let us now be a little more specific about what our portfolio is going to be and what is this pi. So, the portfolio is set up as follows that we invest an amount of pi. So, this is the absolute amount unlike delta which was the number of stocks in the, in the discrete case. So, we invest this amount of a pi in stocks and accordingly invest the remaining amount. What is going to be the remaining amount? So, remaining amount will be x of t minus the amount in pi invested in stocks and this amount is invested in a bond. This means that we purchase. So, if you have if we invest pi in stocks, so that means that we will purchase pi over s where s is the price of the stock. So, that means the number of stocks that you can purchase is the total amount invested in stock divided by s which will denote the price of the stock. So, we will have pi over s number of stocks and we will have x t minus pi amount invested in bond divided by b that is the price of the bond. So, this ratio is going to denote the number of bonds. So, then the change in the portfolio value is given by the following principle and the principle is the following that change in wealth is equal to number of stocks multiplied by change in stock value plus number of bonds into change in bond value. So, the change in wealth this is going to be d x change in stock value this is going to be uh, d s change in bond value is going to be d b. So, d x will be equal to what is the number of stocks we have the number of stocks to be pi over s. So, d x will be pi over s into d s and the number of bonds is x t minus pi over b. So, this is going to be x t minus pi or every in a short form I can write is it x minus pi over b. Now, uh, we recall that d s is equal to mu s d t plus sigma s d w of t and d b t is going to be r b t into d t. So, therefore, d x. So, I am going to replace the value of d s as given by this relation. Actually, I am going to replace d s over s and this value of, of d b over b will be replaced by the value of d v over b given from here. So, accordingly d x is going to be pi into d s over s. So, this is going to be uh, mu d t plus sigma d w of t 
plus x minus pi into dv over b this is going to be r dt. So, I collate the terms uh, which have dt in them. So, this becomes r x minus pi r plus pi mu into dt plus pi sigma into dw of t. And this is uh, nothing but r x plus pi into mu minus r dt plus pi sigma dw of t. So, we next uh, introduce the notation for the expected utility for a given portfolio strategy not necessarily uh, optimal. So, accordingly we have this notation j t comma x semicolon pi and this will be given as the conditional expectation conditioned on wealth at time t being equal to x of the utility of the terminal wealth. Uh, so, observe here that uh, this a j t x pi is going to be the expected utility of the terminal wealth. So, here you observe carefully that for every possible pi and there are many possibilities for pi, you will have a different terminal wealth that means different terminal wealth uh, depending on what strategy pi you adopt and that terminal wealth I will denote by x of superscript pi and for this the expected utility is going to be u of x pi of t. So, j t of x pi is basically going to give you a series of values of this conditional expectation depending on what specific pi that you have chosen. Now, uh, we suppose that this portfolio strategy has the form of a feedback. that is information available at time t. So, this is going to be pi t is equal to pi of t and x pi t for some function pi of t x. So, uh, consequently j will become just j of t x because I have taken this to be of the feedback form is the expected value for a process x pi and depends only on t and x. Next, we have a couple of notations uh, and these notations are for j of t x. So, here j subscript t will be used to denote uh, the partial derivative with respect to t and j subscript x will be the partial derivative of j with respect to x. So, this brings us to a proposition. So, the proposition is the following that we consider the expected utility given by j 
T x semicolon pi is equal to remember this is conditional expectation with respect to T and x of the utility of the final wealth uh, assuming that you have per pursued the portfolio pi. Now, we need this with pi of t and we assume that this particular pi is feedback. So, this is pi is pi of t into x pi of t. Now, this is a very strong result. So, we will just say that under certain conditions j t x satisfies the p d e and what is the p d e that satisfies? The p d e is going to be j subscript t plus half pi square sigma square j x x plus pi into mu minus r j x plus r x j x equal to 0 subject to the condition that j t x is going to be u x. So, we now do a sketch of the proof for the proposition. Now, remember that uh, since pi is now uh, of the feedback form, so this j will now become a function of t and x pi. So, this is a, a function of the process x pi as I mentioned, then we can apply Ito's lemma to obtain the following and Ito's lemma is nothing but uh, the Taylor series expansion in case of a uh, in, in the stochastic setup. So, accordingly we get d j is equal to so, let us look at the first order term. So, this is a function of t and x pi. So, the first order terms are going to be j t d t plus j x d x pi plus the second order term will be half j t t d t square plus half j x x d x pi square plus j t x d t into d x pi. So, just to give an intuition of how we get this. So, remember that our d x pi the wealth process was r x pi plus pi into mu minus r into d t plus pi sigma into d w. So, here uh, if you go back and look at the definition of winner process. So, you will observe that d w is of the order of square root of delta t. Uh, so, accordingly this term uh, is obviously of the order of d t, this term so d x pi has uh, d t and a d w which is order of square root of delta t. So, this is going to be order of d t. Now, here you observe these terms this is going to be order of d t square. Now, uh, if you observe this term d x pi square so that is if you square this we will find that here I will have a d t square term here I will get, get a d t term and the cross term will be d t into square root of d t. So, if I get a d t square term out of this I as d t raised to 3 by 2 out of the cross of those two and d w is of the order of d t square root of d t. So, we are only going to retain the term which is going to be order of d t because if this is order of square root of d t. So, that means the square of this is going to be order of d t plus there are some more terms. And here if you observe carefully this is going to be of the uh, order of d t raised to 3 over 2. And of course, there are some more additional terms. So, what you are going to have is that we are going to retain this term, we are going to retain this term, uh, we are not going to retain this term, we are not going to retain this term and here we are only going to retain pi sigma d w term. Uh, so, accordingly what do we have? We have then j t d t 
plus j x d x pi. So, this is going to be r x pi plus a pi into mu minus r into d t plus pi sigma d w and from here I will only have a term of half j x x pi square pi square sigma square into d t. So, now I am going to collate uh, the terms uh, which involve d t. So, I will get j t plus j x into r x pi plus pi into mu minus r and I will have plus half j x x pi square sigma square the entire thing into d t plus the remaining term which is j x pi sigma into d w. Okay, so, now I have this relation of d j equal to this expression. So, what I am going to do now is I am going to integrate from t to capital T. So, when you do the integration, what will you get? So, I am integrating d j from a t to capital T. So, this is going to give me j of t x pi of t minus j of little t and x. This is going to be integral little t to capital T of this entire expression. So, I will use a dummy variable u. So, j u plus j x r x pi plus pi into mu minus r plus half j x x pi square sigma square into d u plus integral small t to capital T j x pi sigma d w. Now, uh, we observe carefully uh, that uh, this value that is j of t x pi t this is going to be nothing but u of uh, x pi of uh, and the reason is that if you remember that j t uh, j of uh, t x pi uh, this is nothing but e t x of u of x pi of t. Now, when I look at j t x pi of t then of course, this expectation no longer remains conditional because the, then this becomes an expectation uh, with the condition given that uh, small t is equal to capital T and x is equal to x pi of t. So, this means that for this value this quantity this argument that you have here this is no longer a random variable and accordingly we get this result. Okay, so, now we are going to substitute this value uh, of uh, j t x pi t here. So, accordingly we get the following. So, we will get u of x pi t and I bring this term to the right hand side. So, this is going to be j t x plus integral small t to capital T j u plus j x into r x pi plus pi into mu minus r plus half j x x pi square sigma square into d u plus integral small t to capital T j x pi sigma d w. Now, we take the expectation on both the sides. we get expected value of u x pi of t is 
is going to be j t x plus e t x of integral from small t to capital T j u plus j x uh, r x pi plus pi into mu minus r plus half j a x x pi square sigma square d u. And now observe carefully. So, here I have just straightaway taken the expectation. Here this expectation will be the same variable because this is conditioned on uh, this little t and x and this is a function of little t and x. And here we have assumed that you know the expectation can be brought inside and the expectation of dw is going to be 0. Remember that dw is a standard normal random variate. So, this expectation is going to be 0. So, uh, we just note that here we have uh, used the fact that the expectation of the dw integral is 0. Also, by definition, j t x is going to be equal to e t x of u of x pi of t. So, that means, this term and this term are identical and hence they cancel out. Uh, so, therefore, what we get is that e t x of integral t to t of j u plus j x r x pi plus pi into mu minus r plus half j x x pi square sigma square d u this is going to be equal to 0. And uh, accordingly uh, we can conclude that this particular term that is j u or now I can restore t. So, j t plus j x r x pi plus pi into mu minus r plus half j x x pi square sigma square this is going to be equal to 0. Hence, the proposition. Okay, so, now that we are equipped with the proposition, we now come to a very important theorem. So, the statement of the theorem goes as follows. Let the value function be given by v t x is equal to supremum of j t x of pi over pi, where uh, we have already defined j t x of pi to be equal to the conditional expectation of the terminal wealth. So, the value function is going to be, so what you are interested in is you are interested in finding out what is the uh, expected value of the terminal wealth starting off at little t and x. And this can take many values depending on what your pi is which you will denote by j t uh, x of pi. And what you want to do is the maximization of this expected utility which is the same as maximization of this j and that is the reason why this supremum of this j or the maximum value of this j is what we will call as the value function. Okay. So, then under certain conditions, this value function v satisfies the ajb PDE that is the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman PDE and what is the PDE? This is V t is equal to supremum over pi of half pi square sigma square V x x plus pi into mu minus r into V x plus r x into V x equal to 0 and V t x is ux. 
And so, you can obtain that by basically uh, looking at this expression, right. So, what is going to be Vtx? Vtx is going to be supremum of Jtx pi. So, you basically take the supremum over this and then you arrive at this particular relation that is the uh, classical HJB equation. So, this is the equivalent, the continuous time equivalent for the DBP or the discrete dynamic programming uh, approach. Okay. Uh, so, now uh, just an observation that uh, if the supremum of the above expression is attained for some function pi hat. So, this is similar to delta hat that you had done. So, the value of pi or the portfolio pi for which the supremum is attained and we call that to be pi hat of T x. Then the optimal portfolio process pi hat of t is given as a feedback of the form pi hat of little t is going to be pi hat of t comma x pi hat of So, now in order to determine the maximizing function pi hat of T x from the HJB PDE, we differentiate the expression. So, which expression are you going to differentiate? It is going to be this expression. So, we differentiate this expression half pi square sigma square v x x plus pi into mu minus r into v x and differentiating with respect to what? We want to find out what is our pi. So, differentiate with respect to pi and set it equal to 0. So, if we differentiate this with respect to pi, so I will get pi sigma square v x x plus mu minus r into v x equal to 0. So, solving this for pi, we get the optimal portfolio as pi hat of T x is going to be minus of mu minus r over sigma square V x of T x divided by V x x of T x. And this can be written as minus theta over r V x of T x divided by v x x of t x, where theta is mu minus r upon sigma. Now, this is something that is familiar. So, this quantity theta is equal to mu minus r over sigma is called the risk premium. Remember that uh, we talked about risk premium, this is the excess return over risk. Now, uh, this pi hat that you obtained here, so substituting this pi hat in the HJB PDE, that means we will substitute this value in this HJB PDE, we obtain the equivalent HJB PDE as V t minus theta square over 2 V x square over V x x 
plus R x V x equal to 0 subject to the condition that V t x is going to be u x. So, this brings us to the end of this lecture. Uh, so, just to do a recap of what we have done in this lecture. So, in this lecture we moved on from the discrete time case to the continuous time case and we considered the problem of portfolio optimization in the continuous time case. And for that we considered what is known as the black shows Morton framework where uh, we look at uh, the investment in the market comprising of investment in bonds and uh, investment in stocks and the investment in stocks was modeled through the geometric Brownian motion. And using the models for the uh, stock movement using the GBM and uh, the continuous time model for the price of the bond, we looked at what is going to be the wealth process. Then we proceeded to the problem of defining what is the value function and it, then the ultimate goal was to obtain what was the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation. So, accordingly what we did was we first of all gave a proposition and that proposition has a direct ramification on the uh, derivation of the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation whose solution will give you the value function in the continuous time setup and also the, in the process of deriving the uh, Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation we are able to obtain what is going to be our optimal portfolio. So, in the next class we will continue our discussion on this topic and we will look at a few examples. Uh, first of all we will look at the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation that we have uh, derived. Uh, or rather we have presented here and then we will look at how to include consumption in the process to look at what is not only going to be the optimal portfolio, but as well as what is going to be the optimal consumption in the continuous time setup. Thank you for watching.